Hey guys, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I made this stop motion title animation in After Effects just by using the built-in type tool. So let's begin. So what is stop motion? It's basically another form of animation technique where you place something in front of the camera and take a picture. Then you move it slightly, then take another picture. Do this a bunch of more times and when you play them in sequence, it seems like the object is moving. Typically, stop motion animation is 12 FPS. That means 12 individual frames make for one second of animation. What makes stop motion animation appealing is that it uses real physical object and that low choppy frame rate really adds to the overall feeling and aesthetics. Okay, that makes sense. But how we can translate that to an After Effects animation? Let's see an example. I have this composition with some simple position keyframes for these objects coming into the screen. This composition is running on 24 FPS. Now, if I add an adjustment layer with the posterized time effect and drop the frame rate from 24 to 12, you can see it makes the entire animation look choppy and we are kind of getting that same sort of stop motion vibes. So in order to get a stop motion look, these are the steps. Number one, use real photographs and number two, use a really low frame rate and that you can achieve something close to that aesthetic. So if you just want to make your animation look like stop motion animation, use a low frame rate and you're good to go. And this tutorial is done for you guys. For the rest of you people, let's go to After Effects and see how I made the rest of the title animation. In After Effects, I imported this crumble paper texture and started animating its position, scale and rotation. For the last set of keyframes, I copy pasted the first keyframes so we can get a close loop. I added a loop out expression in the position property by alt clicking on the stopwatch and clicking on the white arrow then going for property loop out duration. I copy pasted it for the rest of the transform properties and that gives us this groovy looking animation. After this I added a curve effect and started adjusting it till I get a nice brown tint. I imported a stain image and added a levels effect to give a really high amount of contrast and set the blending mode to multiply. After that, I added a tint effect where I changed the black to a more darker brown. I repeated the same steps as I did with the paper textures as I animated their position scale and rotation and used expression to loop them. And that's our background animation done. Now let's move to the type animation. I created a new composition with 1920 by 1080p with 24 fps and 5 seconds long. I selected the text tool and started typing. I centered the text and then started selecting individual letters and changing their font types. I tried to make it look really random and wacky so take your time and play with different types of font to get a really unique look. After I was happy with the look, I opened the text layer and click on the animate button and added a position property as well as a rotation property. I selected animator 1, went into the add button and from the selector drop down added a wiggly selector. This is gonna make our text wiggle throughout the animation. If we take a preview now we can see the text is not moving at all because the position and the rotation values are zero. I changed the position and the rotation value a little bit and now we can see the text is wiggling. You can go inside the wiggly selector and play with different values to get different type of wiggling. But I didn't change anything. I renamed the animator one to wiggle so I don't get confused with multiple animators. After this, I selected the text layer again and added another position property and again renamed the animator to position so I know which operator is doing what. I changed the position property so the text goes up and after that open up the range selector and animated its offset from 0 to 100. I also added a rotation property so when the letters are falling they have a slight rotation to them. I duplicated the text and changed its letters. After that I opened up its properties and basically changed the position operator's keyframes so instead of coming down it goes up. Now if we unsolo both of the text layers and do a RAM preview, we can see both of the text are in the same position. In order to fix it, I selected both of the layers and hit P to reveal their position properties 
and set them at proper distance. And that's it. That's how type animation is done. Now it was time to assemble everything. I created a new composition with the same dimensions and time and named it final. I bought both the BG and the type comp inside it. I selected the type comp and added a drop shadow effect by going effects, perspective, drop shadow. In the drop shadow effect, I changed the color to more orange hue, set the opacity to 100, direction to 180 degrees and the distance is around 10. I duplicated the effect and set the distance to around 6 to get a nice 3D looking text. After this, I duplicated the text comp again and renamed it type grunge and deleted the drop shadow effects. I bought in this grunge texture and scaled it down and added the tint and the curve effect. I used this texture as a track mat for the type grunge layer and set the mode to multiply. After this, I started playing with the curves to get a nice contrast for the grunge and made this whole text looking a bit grungy to add some nice visual interest. After this, I duplicated the type layer again and renamed it shadow. I changed their color to more darker tone and started playing with their distance and softness to get a nice shadow. I created an ellipse using a shape layer with a light orange hue, centered it and set it to multiply. After that, I opened the ellipse's stroke property and added a couple of dash. Also changed the line cap property to round cap. I added in roughen edges by going effects, stylize, roughen edges, which gives the ellipse a bit of a distorted look. I opened the rotation property for this layer and added an expression by alt clicking on the stopwatch, then writing time times 50, which rotated the ellipse throughout the comp without any keyframes. In the shape layer, I added a trim path and animated its end value from 0 to 100. I duplicated this layer and changed the stroke thickness. I also changed its ellipse rotation property so it rotates from a different angle. I took both of this layer and put them behind the text shadow layer and offsetted them in a time a bit so they don't start immediately. I got this ripped paper texture which I took in Photoshop and basically deleted the center so it just end up with this paper with transparency in the middle. I imported this texture into our final build, scaled it down and masked it so only the top part is visible. I animated its position coming up from the top and settling down. I copy pasted the same curve effect from the BG paper texture and added a drop shadow and adjusted it to get a nice soft shadow. I repeated the same steps with the bottom part of the texture but changed its position so it comes up instead of going down. I added some noise with an adjustment layer and created another adjustment layer with posterized time and set it to 6 to get that really choppy animation. Tie everything up with a nice vignette and we're done. So download the free project file and start experimenting with different photos and textures to come up with your own unique animations. Play with different frame rates to see what looks good for your animation. As always, if you have any questions, suggestions or even criticism, please comment down below. Leave a like if you learn something new, share it and finally, please consider subscribing for more motion graphics tutorial like this. Take care of yourself and I'll be seeing you in the next episode of Motion Nerds. Bye guys.